Well, we are here with good news, as I'm sure you've heard already. The nightmare is finally over. It took 22 days, uh, but we can now confirm, as of two days ago, as you know, uh, Mr. Matt uh, is deceased, and the other escapee, Mr. Sweat, uh, is in custody. He's in stable condition. Um, and we let's give a big round of applause to the men and women of law enforcement who have done a great job. The, uh, it has been a long, long time, but uh, as you've heard, and the superintendent will go into further detail, uh, Mr. Sweat was uh, spotted by a New York State police sergeant, uh, Sergeant Jay Cook. Uh, he was approached this afternoon. Uh, the sergeant recognized Mr. Sweat, obviously from his description. Uh, Mr. He encountered and engaged Mr. Sweat. Mr. Sweat fled. Uh, the trooper gave chase. Uh, the trooper was unable to catch him on foot. Uh, at one point, the sergeant decided to uh, discharge his weapon, hitting Mr. Sweat twice in the torso. Uh, Mr. Sweat went down, help arrived, and Mr. Sweat is now uh, in a hospital in stable condition. This happened a mile and a half from the Canadian border uh, in the town of Constable. I had the chance to speak with Sergeant Cook and uh, congratulate him on his great police work. He was alone when this happened. Uh, Sergeant Cook happens to be from Troop B, which is uh, this area, so he knew the area very well. Uh, but he was still alone, and it was a very courageous act. I said to uh, Sergeant Cook, who has uh, two daughters, 16 and 17, I said, well, you go home tonight and uh, tell your daughters that you're a hero with teenage girls that'll probably last a good 24 hours, and then you'll just be go back to being a regular dad, as I well know. Uh, this was an extraordinary situation in many ways. The prison at Danamora is over 100 years old. This is the first escape in 100 years. Uh, and if you were writing a movie plot, they would say that this was overdone. Uh, you had hacksaws uh, delivered with a, by a facilitator uh, in uh, uh, ground up meat. Uh, you had um, two prisoners who were on the honor block. Uh, they hacksawed through the back of their cell. They got into the catwalks. The catwalks took them into a labyrinth of tunnels where they came across a contractor's job box, a uh, large toolbox. One of the prisoners was a burglar, knew how to pick the lock, picked the lock repeatedly. They used those tools then to do the work of breaking the wall, cutting the pipe, cutting the chains uh, and making way uh, to the sewer pipe. The, it was an extraordinary circumstance uh, and the first escape in over 100 years, but one escape is one escape too many. We will have uh, the ongoing investigation to find out exactly who was involved. We have two people who have been arrested uh, for facilitation or accomplices uh, in this situation, but the investigation is not over. Uh, now that we have Mr. Sweat, it gives us the opportunity to have some more questions and uh, uh, provide more facts on the overall situation. Anyone who we find who was culpable and guilty of cooperating in this escape will be fully prosecuted. The DAs have done a great job of both Franklin and Clinton County, and I want to thank them but we will prosecute them to the full extent of the law. If anyone else was involved, we will find that. We will also be conducting an investigation into the systems in that prison. Uh, and how could this happen? And how did they have access to the catwalk, et cetera? So there are a lot of questions to be answered. And we already started a full investigation that's being headed by the Inspector General of the State of New York. But uh, today ends with good news. These were really dangerous, dangerous men, both Matt and Sweat. They were killers. Uh, Mr. Matt killed at least two people. Uh, Mr. Sweat killed the, a sheriff's deputy in Broome County in a savage, savage way. So these were dangerous people. Uh, they, uh, we could not tolerate them being on the loose. 
Uh, the terrain was very difficult. This prison happens to be located in a heavily forested area, so it was an extraordinarily difficult uh, road to hoe, so to speak. And this was an unprecedented coming together of law enforcement on every level. We had local law enforcement, we had federal law enforcement, uh, state assets, uh, all working together, hand in glove, uh, with gears meshing. And I would just want to thank uh, the Department of Correction, Corrections uh, SORT team, headed by Colonel Bradford, the New York State NCON police, headed by uh, Captain Chafia, the Forest Rangers, the FBI, which did a, an outstanding job. I spoke on the phone to uh, Agent Vale and Agent Tim Dunham is with us today, and we want to thank them the U.S. Marshals, the Clinton County Sheriff's Office, the Clinton County DA, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Franklin County District Attorney's Office, Plattsburgh Police, Vermont State Police, uh, Governor Peter Shumlin, who uh, was extraordinarily cooperative, visited the prison, uh, brought Vermont assets to work hand in glove with New York, the uh, DHSES, Homeland Security, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which did an outstanding job in apprehending uh, Mr. Matt two days ago, Washington County Sheriff's Office, and the St. Regis Mohawk uh, Tribal Assets. We want to thank them all very much. Uh, and last but not least, I want to thank the people of the state of New York who uh, were, uh, as usual, uh, stepped up to the challenge. Uh, people in Franklin County, Clinton County, uh, they had all sorts of leads. They were on the lookout. Law enforcement didn't end here. Every citizen did their job, and they did it bravely, and they did it courageously, and they dealt with the increased police presence and the fear, frankly, of having to go three weeks knowing that there were murderers loose in your backyard. Uh, but New Yorkers are tough. Uh, and um, they stepped right up. They stepped up to the challenge. They provided help. Uh, and, and they stood with us every step of the way. And I want to thank the people of Franklin and Clint Clinton County personally for their courage and every law enforcement officer. Literally uh, thousands of law enforcement officers were engaged in this. And it's nice when it ends well. And uh, we said that we're going to have a celebration at the appropriate time, but that uh, everyone goes home safe. And the escapees uh, have been dealt with you couldn't have a better ending. We wish it didn't happen in the first place. But if you have to have it happen, this is the way you want it to end. Another round of applause for the men and women of law enforcement. <laughs>